Hi everyone, welcome back to another video review. Today I'm doing Cyberpunk 2077. If you don't know me, my name's Delilah, aka Asasina san, and I'm really excited to talk about this game. No, I won't be talking about just the bugs, although my game crashed every hour, sometimes every half an hour, especially after some patches came out. There were definitely some funny Bethesda-like glitches in the game that I actually quite enjoy. Uh, like people's arms going through random objects and shit like that or two NPCs being like morphed into one Some other glitches that felt a little game breaking at times, but I think that my glitch experience was less intense than others I played the ps4 version on the ps5 And I also think my, gl my glitch experience was uh, more intense than people that played on PC so I think everyone's experience is gonna be different depending on what you play. I highly recommend, no matter what I say about this game, off the bat, do not play it yet. Wait until CD Projekt Red works out all the issues and definitely don't play this on previous gen if you can, at least until they fix the issues on those generations. But I do think the best experience will be on PC and then PS5, Xbox Series X and then the previous gen, so definitely don't don't get it yet. Wait till the game is fixed uh, and you'll have the best experience, but I still really enjoyed the game, so I'm not gonna just be shitting on this game, but I still, bugs aside, glitches aside, I still had a lot of fucking issues with this game, but I still really liked this game. I platinumed it, it was my 116th platinum. I enjoyed most of the game, <laughs> let's just say that. I have a written review that will always be a lot more articulate and thought out than my videos reviews because I write better than I speak, but I'm practicing once again. <laughs> yeah, I was really anticipating this game, it was one of my most anticipated of 2020. Uh, everything I saw about the game looked pretty good. There were some things that I was cautioned about. I did feel like it was gonna be a letdown for people because the Night City wires were really getting people amped up and a lot of people thought that this was gonna be the best game ever. And I knew there was gonna be disappointment, but I didn't know it was gonna be a PR disaster. I didn't think it would be this bad. Um, and I do think that this game would have been on the game of the year of 2020 had it had it waited. It could have been on the game of the year for 2021. I think if this game came out in April, it would have been a much better product, um, but it was still in my top five games of 2020, and you can check out that video and see why it fell where it fell. I still really enjoyed this game because I am able to determine what an issue is that's an, a bug and a glitch that's going to be fixed. Not that it's acceptable at all, because it's not, and how they rolled out the embargoes for that game was really fucking shady. I'm not denying any of that at all. I just... I'm able, I'm gonna talk about the game, not the glitches, right? So, just wanna make that clear. But I will say about the, the game, when it first came out and I first popped it in, it looked like a fucking PS2 game. It looked worse than The Last of Us on the PS3, and probably most games on the PS3. And that was a problem, and I was really worried about that. But then, once a patch came out, then everything started to look much better, so. Thank, thank goodness. So, one of my favorite things about this game is Night City. It's freaking beautiful. It's a freaking dystopian cesspool. There's neon lights, there's raunchy perverted advertisements everywhere. There's litter and piles of trash all over the place. NPCs are intoxicated and on drugs and everything just looks super gritty it's like new york city in the 1980s except i think it's influenced from california certain parts of night city like watson which is the first area you start in depending on your class i think um maybe the badlands is where you start if you're a nomad i played as corpo but i started in, in watson and a lot of i think the initial missions with jackie wells are there there's just like super claustrophobic alleyways and these alleyways have a lot of personality and they're not alleyways that I would feel safe going into had I lived in this world, but I did in the game and they were just really cool. But what I really like about not Night City is the neon lights and the NPC outfits. Everyone looks so fucking cool. Like there were neon bras and like when you're driving or walking through Night City, you can see all the different lights from the buildings coming down on the, like the wet ground 
sound and its accurate lighting thanks to the ray tracing and stuff like that, which was not something that was apparent when I first popped in the game, but eventually I was really impressed by what I saw. And then once you branch out further down, you hit like Santo Domingo and Pacifica and those areas open up a lot more they have palm trees and beaches and carousels and roller coasters kind of like if you've been to brooklyn kind of like coney island um in a way except bigger and the buildings are higher and stuff like that and then when you go out into the badlands it's just straight up like dirt ground open space fucking piles of garbage everywhere cars and encampments and everything's so spread apart and far away from each other so each area has a lot of personality it felt a lot like gta 5 where you're driving from los santos and then into blaine county the whole vibe and aesthetic just feels completely different and although all of night city is like gritty each area has its own personality and it made exploring it really fun also everyone's smoking cigarettes in this game I don't know. Don't smoke cigarettes, kids. <laughs> then I think the other part of Night City that I really liked is CD Projekt Red really put a lot of care and attention into the lore and the world building of this game. There's uh, shards everywhere, which are kind of like data pads informing you of what happened in that specific space. There's uh, messages and files on computers that do the same thing. And, and you can also ask, access the net, which tells you about the politics and the crimes and greedy corporations. The world is just filled with criminal activity. There's high technology and persistent access to sex workers. The world just felt fully realized and it was really fun to explore, really fun to learn about. And I, I found myself wanting to read all of the shards, but ultimately I got too overwhelmed with that and it was taking away from the other elements of the game because it was a lot but um it's always good to have that in case you are interested in learning more about each area that you're exploring in night city what i liked about platinuming this game is it forced you to go to every single corner of night city as platinums tend to do which is why i'm such a trophy hunter because i feel like i'm seeing every element of that game than i would have if i just beat the game and each area has a lot of details tells a story there was a situation that happened in corners and alleys that you would never imagine unless you actually platinum the game so that was really cool but what really turned me off about night city it was just too perverted and hypersexualized. like i know a certain amount of sexuality comes with the cyberpunk theme and i also fully acknowledge that i'm a little bit of a prude when it comes to this stuff i don't mind nudity and sexuality in my game if it's relevant i felt like in this game it was relevant sometimes but then it just became excessive excessive i felt like cd project red was more focused on the perversion of the game than actually polishing their product and it was a similar complaint that i had with the witcher 3 except the witcher 3 was a polished product and was a much better game overall but i felt like had they put less hours into mocap sex scenes and a little more hours into tuning their combat it would have been an even better game and probably would have fell on like my top three games of, tw of of the generation sometimes i felt like this game was created by young boys who just hit puberty and i'm not saying that i wanted them to not have any nudity and i know you could turn it off or not have any sexuality but I just wish they would have toned it down a little bit. I think it was a little too excessive. But the problem that I have most about this is that I was able to spend hours modifying my penis if I wanted to, but yet I couldn't modify myself outside of the character creation menu. And for a game that really, you can modify your body how you want, whenever you want. That's like the point of cyberpunk and you can change your hair or your body on a whim. You can give yourself some chrome, uh, you know, on your arm if you feel like it, you know, halfway through your life. It just felt like after the character creation screen, I had no autonomy over my character. This wasn't just in like her hair color or how she appeared because I did make a, a female body type character with a female voice, but I wasn't even able to put on the clothes that I wanted. And so here I am in a world full of NPCs that looked 1000 times cooler than me, but I looked super uncool because I couldn't even dye my hair even though I spent 20 hours modifying my penis if I wanted to. But I couldn't even put the clothes that I wanted because I had to focus on armor rating. And they didn't take a page out of like Destiny's book for transmogging or just do away with the whole armor system period or 
separate cosmetics from armor rating like I don't feel like that's so hard to do right like let me put on what I want cosmetically in this world where every fucking NPC looks super dope and let me worry about my armor in another way like I feel like I feel like other games have done this successfully and I'm a little disappointed that for a game that focuses on body modification and looking however you want to look and having whatever style you want I really felt no autonomy over my style which is a huge loss opportunity all right so my female v may not have looked cool at all until the end of the game where i actually had strong armor that looked really cool in fact i look like a living color fly girl but my character wasn't really that interesting she just felt like a vessel for other people's personalities like her personality was all over the place depending on who she was around and I like my character to have their own personality and be the same no matter who they're interacting with and I felt like V was just one minute she was cool calm and collective and then the next minute she was like super angry and ready to kill everything and she just felt really unstable and like she didn't have much of a personality and I think as I went through the game, I started to understand that that was kind of the point a little bit. I don't want to spoil anything, but as I've played the game more, I realized that V is actually a vessel for everyone around her. She isn't meant to have a personality. But I also think that the female voice actress was not as good as the male voice actor. And when I saw Matt playing the male V, I was like, oh, okay, this seems like a lot better of an experience than the female V. And there were some story beats regarding romances and stuff that also didn't feel right depending on what ending you chose. And I don't want to speak too much into it until I do a spoiler cast, which we don't plan to do until the PS5 version comes out. But that didn't feel quite right based on an ending versus a romantic situation. Like some things just felt inconsistent. Um, but the story was very good. I really enjoyed the story. I felt like it had a lot of depth. I do think that it was very intelligent and I found myself constantly wanting to see what was going to happen next or how things were going to play out with certain characters. I even had some feels. But then not only is the main story good, which in The Witcher 3 I don't think the main story was that good. The real draw of that game was the side characters. This game had it all. The side fucking missions were good. The main missions were good. Like everything story-wise was pretty damn good. None of it felt like a fetch quest. Every quest was unique from the next. I didn't feel like I was doing the same thing over and over again, except like the NCPD stations and like fixing criminal activity and stuff like that. But that that's just combat related but a lot of these uh missions had really dark themes like themes of suicide themes of homicide themes of like violent revenge child abuse like really really dark themes which did fit with the cyberpunk world and it made me really uncomfortable so you know if you're someone that is easily impacted by themes like that i do suggest you don't play this game because a lot of pieces of this game made me feel very uncomfortable, especially when I was dealing with the loss of my cat. But I do recommend that, that you do all of the side missions if you can. Because they're all very good and interesting and some of them are very funny, some of them are really deep, thought provoking. It just made me really pensive about like humanity and what it means to live in this cyberpunk world or in a city, period. So even though V felt a little bit of an empty shell, I do think that the story and the supporting characters were very good. I was very interested in all of the NPCs, especially the ones that you can romance. I felt like all of their stories were extremely interesting and they made for extremely realistic partners. Uh, especially Judy. I felt like her ending quest was one of the best. I felt the most connected to her as a character uh, besides Jackie Wells and also as a romantic partner. I felt like that was the one NPC that you can romance that. Actually, no, River too. River, River felt like the most like humane person in this world that just had like no bad intentions whatsoever. Judy had a little bit of a darkness to her, but then you learn about why. And so like, this is what I mean. Like there's like a lot of depth to these characters uh, and and I'm gonna remember a lot of them, but V, not so much. <laughs> and kind of related
related to my complaint about the perversion um, there is a lot of sexual violence in this game especially towards women so I do want to caution people that have been through sexual violence themselves this can be very triggering for me it was uncomfortable to see but I also think that they told those stories really well I just wish that they would have explored sexual violence with other types of people because in this world like it's not just women that serve as sex workers or that experience sexual violence but that's a whole other thing but there is a lot of that in this game so you know just prepare yourself if you plan to play it so overall the big chunk of this gameplay felt like a combination of gta 5 and fallout in the ways that it's like gta 5 is literally just the driving and the way that the map is set up but it felt like fallout in terms of the rpg elements it's a really deep rpg there's loot everywhere to sell store or dismantle um, there's random junk that you can sell you can upgrade your gear and your weapons and your clothing you can craft weapons and armor you have upgrades that you can pour attributes into and purchase perks with like body tech intelligence reflexes and cool these give you access to hacking stealth gunplay melee combat so if you put your stats into body you're more likely to do better with melee if you put stats into reflex you're better with gunplay if you put stats into cool with you're better with stealth if you put that's into intelligence and hack you're more likely to be better at hacking and dialogue you get more dialogue choices i mean there didn't feel like a proper respec that wasn't super expensive and even then i think you were only able to do it for the perks and not the attributes i'm not sure i didn't actually ever respec but i do know that there's an option but yeah you are pretty much tied to a specific build which doesn't come in handy like let's say you do all intelligence and tech and you have to go do the beat the brat side missions which is just boxing you're gonna really be underpowered and those are actually the hardest missions in the game just keep that in mind and for the platinum it was especially annoying because i had to max out certain uh attributes for the platinum but you can only get a certain amount of attributes throughout the game even if you beat all the side missions you can't max out all skill sets you have to pour into specific skill sets so um i had to do a lot of reloading saves for the platinum but that's just like a trophy hunter thing but it, it might also affect you even if you're not trophy hunting even if you want to do all the side missions and like i said you put all your points into tech but you want to really succeed in the beat the brat missions but you can't because your body's so weak and you know even the gorilla arms don't help you out as much as you want it to so it's unfortunately that it really like pigeonholes you into a build and it doesn't help you do everything that you want to do in the game so that was another complaint i had but i do like how deep the rpg aspects are and how much it felt like fallout the driving initially and the gunplay i thought was pretty poor but then once you get better weapons and better upgrades and better cars uh it feels good so that's not dependent on the game it's more of an issue with have you purchased the or picked up the better items in the game i felt like for an rpg the gunplay was pretty good uh normally rpg games with like first person shooting tend to feel really clunky and although this wasn't silky smooth like a doom game or wolfenstein or whatever it still felt good uh in terms of gunplay the stealth was not so good but once again i didn't put all of my attributes into cool to be able to have really good stealth but i do feel like sometimes the prompting for the stealth attack didn't show up when i needed it to so that was a little annoying the mission structure felt messy i especially in the beginning of the game i was getting phone calls after missions while i had an npc talking to me giving me a mission quest while i had a text message coming from someone and it was just really overwhelming at first i was like what the hell am i supposed to do i'm getting all these missions at one time and i can't even pay attention to the dialogue like i would be talking to a mission giver and then all of a sudden get a phone call from someone and i'd have to read and listen to both dialogues at the same time it was just really really messy and it really took away from me enjoying what those characters had to say and then there was even one time where i went to do one mission but i had this other mission active and because i went too far from the other mission it failed 
that mission, so I had to reload my save. Thankfully, there is auto saves or manual saves, and reloading is going to come in handy for you a lot, not only when it comes in terms of like picking a better dialogue choice, but also if you fuck up like I did. Thankfully, I was able to go back and complete that mission before moving on to the mission that I wanted to focus on, but I felt like that was really sloppy. I wish that wasn't the case. But it was. It's a shame because a lot of good dialogue was pretty much overshadowed by sloppy mission structure. And I'm hoping that it'll get patched because that seems like a gameplay oversight. So overall, Cyberpunk, I would say, is a really sloppy game, but that has a lot of potential. It has a lot of charm. It has really intelligent storytelling, fun gameplay, really deep RPG mechanics, and a beautiful, really beautiful, fully realized world. I think once things are patched and the PS5 version came comes out I think people will look back on this game as a critical darling but I think that the bad PR around it will never be forgotten and I th I, th I hope that this is a lesson to all developers and publishers because they're really the ones that have the power over when a game is released and how shitty it is like the developers are not to blame on this it's, it's definitely like the executive staff that are making these decisions that are saying, oh well, put it out, I don't care if it looks bad, we've delayed this game too much, we need to make our money. Like, fuck your money, like, there's so many games that I can play right now, that gamers can play right now. Like, we have a service like Games Pass where we have so many games that we can just dive into. We don't need you to release your game right away, like, I can wait, sure. I'll be a little sad that a game I'm really looking forward to I have to wait longer for, but like, I'll be fine, I'll be fine, just treat your developers good make a polished product don't rush it and let your developers get a break so that they can be fully present when they finally get around to working on the game that has the potential like this game to be one of the best games ever but they fucked that up and so i hope i hope this is a lesson to to publishers and, and developers even though i feel like this game once it's polished and optimized for the ps5 and xbox series x I do think it'll be a memorable experience. I do think a lot of people will have great things to say about this game if they're waiting, which good on you for waiting. Even putting aside all those issues that happened with Cyberpunk 2077, I still think there were better games that came out in 2020. I do think that this game would have been in talks of game of the year had it released differently, not just timing wise, but you know, with polish. But I think that even if I completely erase all of the issues of this game and just focus on that core gameplay, I still think that other games were a lot better than Cyberpunk 7. Although I really like this game, so wait for it to be at its best form before you play it. I do recommend it once it's in that state. <laughs> Thank you for watching this video review. Let me know what you guys think in the comments of Cyberpunk if you played it or what you've heard about it. I won't be doing any more gameplays on that because I did platinum it. I hope once this game is clean up and polished that people will give it a chance because it is a lot of fun and I do think that people will enjoy it, especially if you like games like Fallout and GTA. Let me know what you guys think and thank you so much for watching. Take care everyone.